Hello. In this video, we'll explore the profile styles which control the format of longitudinal profiles and define what data to be shown in them. You can access profile styles and modify them in the Profile Styles panel here. Here you can edit a style, duplicate an existing style to create a new one, and export a profile style to use it in another project. The Profile Style dialog consists of four tabs. We'll go through them one by one. First, in the General tab, you'll find the style name. You can definitely select a name for your style, except that you can't rename the two basic styles, Standard Gravity and Standard Pressure. In the Profile Splitting panel, you can set the options for splitting long profiles. This will help you producing profiles in parts that fit the size of drawing sheets. For example, if I set the maximum part length to 400 meters, you'll see that this profile is immediately split into two parts where each part of them does not exceed 400 meters in length. The two parts are matched at this manhole, and there is a small extension shown here with a cut line. Since I checked the option, show a short extension at end. In the next panel, you can select to show the lateral pipes connected to this line. These are the pipes of the same network connected to the nodes or manholes shown in the profile. If you select to show them, you'll have an additional option to decide if the lateral pipes at the first and last nodes in the profile should be shown as well. The other option here is for showing crossing pipes. These are the pipes of other networks that cross over or below the pipeline. Showing the crossing pipes on the longitudinal profiles helps a lot in solving the interference problems during design and is very useful for coordinating the construction sequence of utility networks. The Pipes panel lets you select how pipe walls are represented. The pipe wall can be shown as a single line, either at the inner or the outer face of the pipe, or as double lines representing the wall thickness. There is an option to hatch the pipe wall as well in this case. The Nodes panel contains several options to control the format of nodes and its annotation in the graph area. First, you can select to show or hide node structures. The other three options are related to the top annotation of the node. You can select to show or hide the node name, node type, and backdrop information in case of gravity networks. If I select to show backdrop information, for example, you'll see that this manhole is indicated to have a vertical backdrop. Let me remind you that backdrop settings are defined in the Network Properties as the Managed Networks panel. You can find more information about the backdrop analysis in Part 10 of this tutorial series. The Ground Lines panel contains a couple of options for showing hatch on the plotted ground lines of existing ground and design ground surfaces. And here we reach the Vertical Exaggeration option. It is useful to know that in any longitudinal profile, the horizontal distances are exactly equal to the pipe length and plan. You can say it is drawn at a scale of 1 to 1 in the horizontal direction. To control the ratio between vertical dimensions and horizontal distances in the profile, you specify this value called vertical exaggeration. For example, if you specify an exaggeration value of 10, this means that the vertical dimensions like pipe diameter and manhole depth, are all multiplied by 10. So a manhole with an actual height of 3 meters will be plotted on the profile with a height of 30 meters. In turn, if this profile is plotted on a drawing sheet that has a scale of 1 to 1,000, the profile will have a horizontal scale of 1 to 1,000 and a vertical scale of 1 to 100. If I change this exaggeration value to 5, this means consequently that the profile to be plotted on the same sheet will have a horizontal scale of 1 to 1000 and a vertical scale of 1 to 200. The last two panels in the general tab are used to add grid lines to the profile and define the spacing between them. You can show grid lines in the horizontal or the vertical direction, or both of them together. You can also specify the location of axis labels here.
Now let's move to the next tab, which is the Data Bands tab. In this tab, you have a full list of available data bands, which represent the properties of pipes and nodes. To include a data band in the profile, you should move it to the list of displayed data bands. You can then use these arrows to rearrange the order of data bands in the list, because they will appear in the profile in the same order. And when you select one of the bands here, you can modify the format of it. For each data band, you can type here the band title that will appear on the profile. Then you have several properties that will vary depending on the selected band. For example, in the stations data band, you can select to show stations at equal intervals that you define here. You can also define the numeric format of the station value. If we go to the slope data band, you'll see that we have options to show slope value in decimal, percent, per mil, or fraction format. The next tab is for text formatting. In this tab, you can specify the text height and text style for each type of text that appear on the profile. The last tab here is for profile layers. Here you can select the layer to be used for each component of the profile. This gives you flexibility to define the color and line type of each component by modifying the properties of the layer itself. Now you know everything about creating profiles and formatting them using profile styles. In the next video, you'll learn about exporting a 3D BIM model from InfraWizard and how you can migrate it to Autodesk Navisworks with all associated data of pipes and nodes. Goodbye, and see you soon.